Well, the uh, dirt project here has kind of reached a tipping point. It's kind of in a sad state of affairs right now. But uh, I was able to get my intercooler fittings in and my coolant fittings in. And I was like, you know what, let's put it to a test and uh, push the machine to the limits. And boy, did I ever. Should have gotten a video of it, but I was thrashing it pretty hard. And essentially what happened was I was uh, cresting one of the levees back there in the swamp. It's like a man-made berm that they built back in the 80s. To uh, control the uh, flood stages of the river, um, basically the water flow. And I was crossing the hill probably about 10 or 12 mile an hour, and I'm pretty sure this front end here got about maybe 6 to 12 inches of uh, air time there, and it slammed down. And I think the front left got most of the brunt because what happened was the frame rail, um, well, basically that panel just beer canned the chain cases right there you kind of see it right there yeah and in doing so about 10 seconds later there was a bang and then all my exhaust gases kind of deflated out of the tires and what ended up happening was on the front left there again this guy kind of snapped off this is the exhaust stub that goes into the coupler these are welded onto the uh, stub axle because what happened was when that deformed uh, the majority of loading then was transferred over to this guy, which it wasn't really designed for. And yeah, it just basically sheared off. Not so much shear from a torque standpoint, but you know, uh, bending moment type of stuff. So I was able to uh, get some fittings in and isolate the tires so then I can inflate it with just an electric portable compressor, which I was able to do out in the field there. And then... Uh, what also happened was uh, because of that uh, bending, the sprocket was misaligned, and then it threw the chain off the sprocket. You can kind of see down there. I was able to get it. It was pretty easy, actually, just to take a hammer and a pry bar and just bang that thing out. And I was able to get the bound-up chain so then that it could at least freewheel. Um, but, yeah, I was able to limp it back home in three-wheel drive and... Uh, Unfortunately, that's a lot bigger fix than what I want to mess with right now. So, I got bigger and better things to do uh, this summer than to work on this thing, you know, pulling axles and all that fun stuff. But So just to let you guys know, the Derp ATV, there probably won't be any more videos um, for the next couple of months there. But, uh, you know, it just comes with the territory when you're doing something different than everyone else. It's all about, you know, the, the risk management that you got going on, which is why I'm kind of excited about the DERF 2.0 because it uses a lot more boilerplate items, stuff that's already been proven, instead of trying to, you know, go in and design it from scratch, from the ground up, kind of like what I got going on here. So, who knows, maybe I might actually end up building the DERF 2.0 before I actually fix this thing. But, uh, yep, you know, just like I said, it just comes with the territory when you're doing something different. A lot of the Russians, they just copy bolt for bolt on that Chirp Pro system. Um, I just like to do it my own way and see if I can improve it. It's kind of how uh, innovation works there. So, yep.